Hello and many thanks for joining us on the program this morning off the press where we take a look at the headlines in our news papers. My name is Felicity Ezewike and I will be joined for this conversation by Tubosu Akeju, a reputation manager via Skype of course. Thank you uh, Tubosu. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning uh, to you. All right, let's see which is our first paper this morning. We'll start with Punch a newspaper. COVID-19, Kanu Surge worries FG Ganduje begs for help. Multiple burials, relatives attribute debt to malaria-related ailments. Two Lagos patients die, Sokoto NMA chair, another WHO worker test positive. Also on the front page, at the top, just above the masthead, Akin Jibe dies at 88, Buhari, Obasanjo, Jonathan, governors, others mourn. you find details on page 7 of the paper. Uh, we also have President orders payment of varsity lecturers with held salaries. CBN's 50 billion naira COVID-19 fund disbursement begins Thursday. And of course, we have something on inflation that's just crazy right now. It's hit 23 month high at 12.26%. That's according to the MBS. Uh, Chubasu, so let's, let's look at the uh, situation in Kanu as that headline is showing. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Um, thank you very much, uh, Felicity. Uh, the, the news from Kano is very worrying and disturbing, and um, because Kano is as densely populated as Lagos, and it seems like the uh, the, the the surge in the number of deaths in the last few days, you know, is begging for answers from a lot of questions because we're not even sure if this is a situation of COVID-19 outbreak or community spread, or is a situation where the numbers of deaths were initially not known. Um, I read the story and I, a part of it was did refer to the fact that um, some of the family members of those who have died have um, said that um, their relative you know, showed symptoms of malaria uh, before dying. The symptoms of malaria and the symptoms of uh, COVID-19 are quite similar, joint pain, um, uh, fever, headaches, and all of that. So um, I think that this something has to be done very, very quickly about Kano to understand what is what is happening. And if you study how the coronavirus um, um, outbreak usually grow, you see that you see the similarities in what we are seeing in Kano because every other day it seems like the number is you know is starting to double. You know, and, and it's really, really worrying. And I hope that the kind of attention that Lagos State has received, I, I'm hoping that Kano will be able to receive that very, very quickly, you know, so that we do not have, you know, we don't erode all the benefits that the epicenter in Lagos has gained because we now have a problem in Kano. But I think that the government, um, you know, are, are duly concerned and just really hope that they will move in the right direction to um, know what's happening and quickly nip it and board and control. Do, um, do, you, do, do you see an improvement in the testing capacity, being that we are still barely um, hitting 5,000, where countries are doing almost 20,000 tests in a day? Um, with this situation that we don't know uh, the cause and they say investigation is ongoing, shouldn't there be maybe a little focus in that area so we know exactly what is going on? Um, I mean, God knows what could happen. Yes. Um, so what I even see about the issue of testing is we need to check some of these countries that are posting a lot of numbers and to be sure that what type of testing are they doing um, before we also now, you know, castigate the government, you know, in the wrong way. I, I'm, I'm like I always say, like I'm so much in support of constructive criticism. So there are two major types of testing. There's the PCR type of testing, which usually takes a while. Um, I mean, it's preliminary chain reaction. So you, you have steps, you, loads of reagents and all of that that you have to use. And there's there's a rapid um, test kit. So the difference is so something that we're probably more familiar with. If you're testing for malaria, you can either use a strip or you can, you know, use, uh, what's it called? You can take 
blood samples and put it under the microscope and start to check, you know. But there's difference because when you do under the microscope, you actually will see the, you know, uh, plasmodium organism and see the numbers there. When you do the strip, is it going to tell you it's positive or it's negative? So the problem with rapid testing is that you can have false positive or po uh, false negative, which is why um, um, I think the WHO has not approved it, but it doesn't mean that people are not using it. I think South Korea went that direction at some point. So with this, with the low number of testing in Nigeria, NCDC might need to reconsider, you know, their present stand on rapid testing and, you know, maybe now use the PCR as a second level of testing. If I'm not, a, you know, a medical specialist, but sometimes some logic can just come into making this thing work, you know, to say, okay, you know what, let's get more people tested. If you test, you know, we'll take both samples to test you through a rapid kit test. It's going to be more expensive, but you can get more people tested because if I've taken your sample, you can get your rapid um, results maybe in 24 hours or something and then get your PCR um, sample in um, maybe three days or as long as it will take. But that way you can, you know, you can ramp up testing quickly. But again, right. I said, I'm not, I'm just using logic here. I'm not, you know, um, a yeah. medical specialist, yeah. Yeah. Well, but we, I think we get that, that we, we get that, we get that much. Um, um, but before we move on from the Punch newspaper, I want to um, uh, pick your brains on the COVID-19 fund, uh, 50 billion from the CBN. It begins disbursement on Thursday. Um, what's your take yeah. on that? So, I, I, I mean, I, I've, I've, I'm trying to read through this theory and the strategy is not very clear to me. But one thing that I know is that definitely a stimulus package is very much needed. Um, the question will be where and if there's any suggestion I will have, uh, it would be that any economic recovery plan or any economic, um, any, any, any method that the government is trying to use to stimulate the economy from total collapse has to be well, well coordinated so that we don't have a situation where are you giving the money to the, to the winners or to the losers? You know, how much of the money will go to the winners? Because we mm -hmm. must re realize that during this lockdown, we have winners and we have losers. So, you know, it has, we, those things have, you know, we have to look at it very clearly. Um, I'm not sure that um, the news I've read so far has done justice to explaining how that fund is going to be disbursed. It's a step in the right direction, but I think it has to be properly done and it has to be done to the people who really, really, you know, need it. All right, let's take a look at the uh, Nation newspaper now. Uh, the screamer on the front page on your screen is COVID-19, a door or your canoe or shoe on the special watch. It has two riders, 117 new cases, take national tally to 782. Fake coronavirus vaccines on sale in Kanu. That's another one. And then there's a rundown of the latest figure on COVID-19. At the top of the paper, we're looking at a president to CGA, CJN. Gets awaiting trial prisoners out. That's the instruction. St. Nicholas Hospital shot over coronavirus. Abia closes hospital. Uh, Buhari OK's adamant varsity lecturers pay to cushion COVID-19 effect. Chubasu, still with us? Yes. Yeah, good to know that the network yeah. is playing nice at the moment. So which of these headlines would you want to uh, tackle first? Um, right now, it looks like everything is speaking to COVID-19. Everything, um, yes. But I think the issue uh, about the vaccine in Kano has to be, you know, treated with all seriousness. Uh, I don't even know how we got, how that got there. You know, I think government needs to really, really quickly investigate what is going on in Kano. And I hope that it's not linked to the increase in the number of deaths in Kano. Um, well, there's, there, there's, uh, just to cut in quickly, some professors or, or doctors are coming out to say that they have the vaccine and they are requesting that the federal government should do some sort of verification of their claims. They've dared the federal government to do some verification on their claims. When people like this come out and they make these claims and government does not respond, doesn't it feel the interaction by other citizens? They want to go, oh, government is not paying attention. This man is, 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 is a professor, he's a doctor. He says he has a cure. He must be very smart. Let me go and apply. Isn't that how these things begin? So I think the, the issue of 
developing vaccine is something that it's not uh, a walk in the park. And um, from the little I know about this thing, the vaccine is a dead strain of an organism that, you know, triggers your immune system to act like it has seen the organism so that your body is prepared to fight when the real organism shows up. So that's like a lot of work, you know. And if you look at, you know, um, previous reports and data, they've said that if we have a vaccine in 18 months, then it would be an unprecedented timeline and, you know, a miracle, as it were. So if there's a doctor or, as, or there's a professor in Nigeria that's saying that, oh, I have the vaccine, there are processes to um, producing and using vaccine. How much testing has that vaccine gone through? I mean, the UK is about to start testing vaccines today. So where has the professor or the doctor submitted the papers, you know, and the theoretical uh, approach to developing that vaccine? Where has it been published? You know, where are the facts? Who has tested it? Where has it worked? You know, where's the laboratory test? There are loads of questions to answer. So um, I'm not entirely sure um, that, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to even take this story very, very seriously because okay. it just looks like, you know... No, but it has to be um, said because it is, it is not, not everybody has um, that enlightened uh, um, a way of thinking, knowing that there is a process for vaccines to coming. We're talking about um, Nigeria's very high illiterate population who are scared and frightened at this time. And some of them have maybe monies or don't, and they want to get a cure sometimes. So that is something government should really uh, take a look at. Uh, but another, okay. It might even be expedient for government to, you know, prosecute anybody that is testing vaccines, you know. Fair enough. <laughs> human because, you know, because it absolutely doesn't make any sense to me. So, Fair enough. Okay, let's, let's look at this um, issue of prisoners. There's been a lot of conversation. The WHO, um, UNESCO, the UN, the Amnesty International, everybody's coming out to say that more needs to be done when it comes to the case of prisoners. Across board, uh, I understand, I can't remember the country now, that in a prison, about 60 inmates got the coronavirus because of congestion look at the situation we have in nigeria we also know that buhari i don't it's not captured here but buhari has written the cjn asking him to expedite actions to release uh, inmates what is your take as per how we are going about it so far about 2000 plus people have been released across the country what more needs to be done when it comes to the issue of our prison inmates so um, the issue with the prisoners or the, the prison inmates is actually a very funny one. I'll tell you why. So right in the prison, they're actually somehow safer right in the prison. And um, that's the you know, unless that's, yes, that's the, the way to look at it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> unless, you know, uh, one of the prison workers become infected and then then you will have a disaster because if one person gets it, you can be rest assured that everybody in there is going to have it. Having said that, one of the things that I know that COVID-19 is going to do to Nigeria as a problem is that it's going to um, it's going to do to us rather is that it's going to amplify you know, our problems and maybe allow us to take this problem a lot more seriously and find, you know, a solution to them quickly. The problem of prison congestion and the slow uh, pace of, um, 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 of, of justice um, and the court processes in Nigeria has always been a problem, you know. So it seems like COVID-19 uh, is starting to jolt us into action to say we need to expedite action. We shouldn't be keeping people who are, you know, haven't faced trial for so long in the prisons and all of that. So... If you look at it, it's a step in the right direction. It's a good thing. Um, I don't know how, if the CJN has shut down the courts, I don't know how they want to really expedite, you know, the court processes, considering that there are lockdowns and everything. So I cannot see a clear line of sight of a practical approach to Dealing doing this situation. right now. You so know, we just, we just, well, uh, are, are you saying we're, go we're going to resort to praying and hoping that the uh, virus doesn't get to any of our prisons? Is that, an, is that a strategy? That's not a strategy. I would even rather say that extra measures have to be put in place for those who go in and out of the prison. Like, there has to be strict, very strict um, adherence to um, hygiene. You know, even if it has to get to them wearing... PPEs and all of that, they have to do it because may, no matter the congestion in the prison is not, I don't think it's something that we can, you know, 
solved very quickly at the snap of our finger or within one week or one month. You know, so I think the right thing to do now is while you're trying to expedite um, action in court processing and all of that, which we've needed donkey years ago, you know, um, we also need to know that in the immediate time we need to put very, very good measures in place in the prison to avoid contamination because it's, it's, it can happen to those who are actually, quote and unquote, meant to be there. All right, uh, let's take a quick look at the Nigerian Tribune uh, newspaper. On, front, on the front, we have COVID-19, expectedly. 170 new cases. FG monitoring Kanu orders. Uh, Kanu is on all the headlines so far. Uh, that's it on your screen. A couple of riders for you. Details on page 3, 5, 8, and 27. We'll just take a couple of them. Lagos, okay, the breakdown of the figures. UK to begin human trial of coronavirus uh, vaccine. That's uh, a new one. Um, human trials. Medical doctor test positive in Ekiti. And uh, Lagos records two deaths, discharges nine. Um, th these are some of the figures we have. Uh, Chibisu, uh, I want to take uh, your thought uh, quickly before we go look at other headlines on the paper. The, we just heard uh, an Akiti doctor just died of the virus. The increased risk, just tested positive, I beg your pardon, tested positive. The, <laughs> I, I need to apologize for that. He tested positive. He did not die. Okay. The increased risk um, to our healthcare workers, um, is there anything that can be used to, um, you know, cushion that effect to um, increase their mental resilience in this time of added pressure? Um, so I'd say that in the time of war, and which I think the COVID-19 crisis is like a, is like a, a, a war. Um, our soldiers right now are the doctors in the front line. And it's the other that comes with the job. I think special care should be taken. Um, I've read the DG of NCDC say that there's a periodic testing of medical personnel working, you know, in isolation centers, um, you know, to ensure that they're not, you know, they're not, uh, what's it called, they are not infected. And, and I think that one of the things that, I mean, in you know, my own inquisitive nature um, is I've tried to, you know, read up about this thing. And I think that for people who manage COVID-19, the processes are absolutely very, very important. So um, if I think the issue in equity should be quickly investigated, because if it's a medical doctor in the isolation center, it has to be quickly investigated to try and see was there a break in protocol or anything at some point in time? You know, was it, did it come from when he was, most likely from when he was removing his PPE or not washing his hand properly so that, you know, there could be a learning from that. You know, the, the job hazard for, um, um, for doctors just went, you know, off the roof, you know. So, but our prayers are with them, you know, really appreciating them. I'm aware that, you know, they are private citizen organizations and um, that are trying their best to even find a way to appreciate the doctors. And like you mentioned, I think that, you know, you might need a bit of physio, um, psych psychologist to start to, you know, talk to these doctors once in a while and all of that. And if you remember, like, two weeks ago, the, the Lagos State Governor organized, like, a concert during Easter for those people who are working. And you can see the excitement of, you know, mm -hmm. some of the people at the front line. So once again, kudos to everyone, you know, working on the front line. All right, Tibos, let me just run quickly through some of the headlines left, and then you pick one and we wrap things up. Um, FG will use BVN to identify poor, vulnerable Nigerians. Uh, we also have um, four die in cars, as cars ram into joggers, bystanders in Lagos. And then uh, we won't allow fast food takeover of our land by headsmen. Oh, no community cries out. Military air strike kills scores of bandits in Niger, Yobe State. And then inflation rose to 12.26% in March. That's according to the MBS. Quickly, which of these do you want to speak on for like 30 seconds or thereabout? I'm going to talk about the BVN. Um, when I read that story, I, I could see that um, the minister seemed to have, you know, taken the feedback of, of um, Nigerians and a lot of people, some of which I've even made on your program before, on your station, um, to say that, you know, 
BVN is not the only thing that we can use. So if you read the body, if you read the full news, you see that it's both BVN using religious leaders, using telecoms to identify the poor and very vulnerable people. Um, while you know we didn't like what they did at first by dashing out cash and all of that, it's you know um, we should commend you know the, um, the ministry for now going the route of using technology and you know data to um, to get to the vulnerable uh, people. Um, if there's still enough time, inflation issue. I'm really worried about inflation because the lockdown started about the last week, we, you know, the last, very close to the last days of March, and we already have like you know this sort of increase. I can imagine what will happen in April now that right. there's a lot of lockdown. Oh. Um, Always a pleasure to talk with you. Watch out for that. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for me. All right. And that's a wrap for the newspaper review this morning. You can catch up. If you missed out, uh, go to our YouTube channel at uh, Plus TV Africa. Uh, you see um, um, a playlist there for the program. You can also stay glued to your TV on DSTV channel 408. My name is Felicity Ezewike, thanking you for your time.